Hey, welcome back. We're going to take a look at some applications of the integral. So we saw this problem a while back ago, and it says the area, this is just an area problem. So we're saying the area under this cubic graph from 0 to 3 is 18, 81 over 4. So if I were to kind of look at that from 0 to 3, we know what a cubic graph looks like. It is saying that the area underneath here is 81 over 4. And we can use that to solve some other questions. For example, what about number 1 right here? Where it says, well, how will we find the area from negative 3 to 3? Ah, well, for this we can use symmetry on this one. So, in this case right here, x cubed is an odd function, so we saw this the other day. This is going to be symmetric about the origin. So from 0 to 3, we know that this area is 81 over 4. But what about from negative 3 to 0? Well, that area is negative 81 over 4. So what's going to be the total area? Of course, it's going to be 0. So we use symmetry a lot in calculus. Even like looking at the area, what if I did like the area of 2 pi of sine of x? Well, we can actually answer this without using it, without look, without even solving it. I know that's going to be 0. Because if I think of what sine of x looks like, 0, pi, 2 pi, my favorite mathematical wrapper. If I look at the area here, this is symmetric about the point x equals pi. And of course, those areas are the same, but because they're opposites of each other, one on top, positive area, and a negative area, that net area is going to be 0. So we use symmetry a lot in calculus to help us out. All right, the next question says, well, what about the area from 3 to 0? Well, this is one of our properties. This is going to be negative from 0 to 3 of x cubed dx. So that's going to give me negative 81 over 4. And the next one says, well, what about negative 3 to 0? Well, again, I'm going to use that symmetry. So I know the area from negative 3 to 0 is going to be negative 81 over 4. We, we saw that in part 1. We're just going to multiply that by 4 on the outside. And this becomes, of course, negative 81. Very easy to do. So we can tell a lot about integrals if you can use symmetry and just use those properties that we've learned. All right. So all right, let's review this one right here. Oh, no. So this is just a review for us. This is an algebraic substitution. So if we let u equal x plus 1, I know that du would be dx. So if I were to rewrite this integral, we would get x squared times u to the one-third du. Now the only problem is I have an x here, and I don't want to have that x right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our algebraic substitution and say let x equal u minus 1. And now we're going to get this u minus 1 times u to the one-third du. Oops, that was squared, forgot squared. And then if I expand this, we get u squared minus 2u plus 1. Multiply that by u to the one-third du. And then distribute some more. We would get u to the, that's, oh my gosh, that's what, six-thirds, seven-thirds? Minus 2u to the four-thirds plus u to the one-third du. Evaluating your integral, we would add 1, uh, 10 thirds, that becomes 3 tenths, plus, whoops, that's minus 2, this becomes you add 1, that becomes 7 thirds times 3 over 7, plus this becomes u to the 4 thirds times 3 over 4, don't forget your C1, and our last step, replace u. We get 3 tenths u, which is x plus 1, to the 10 thirds minus 6 over 7 u, which is x plus 1 to the 7 thirds plus 3 fourths. And again, this becomes x plus 1 to the 4 thirds plus your constant of integration. Wow, that is ugly, but it's ours. Notice they aren't that hard to do. Look, watch, ready? Algebra, 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 calculus, algebra. Most everything we do here is algebraic in nature. All right, so let's take a look at another example, some more problems. 
Ah, uh, evaluate this area. Now, we cannot integrate this. Write this down. We can not integrate this. Okay? We cannot integrate this. This one we have to recognize this as the top half of a circle. And of course the radius is 2. Remember we saw that the other day. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. y is equal to plus or minus r squared minus x squared. So recognizing this as a top half of a circle, I sketch this. We always sketch circles. Okay? 2, 2, 2, of course that's negative 2. We all, sorry, I messed up. We only want the area from negative 2 to 0, so we only want this area. We don't want that area. So to get the area, it's going to be 1 fourth pi. The radius is 2 squared. And look, this problem is easy as pi. We, and the integral solves for area. That's what an integral finds for us area. So if I can grab the shape, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier for us. Here's a question that we saw on our homework a few nights ago. It says, let f be graphed below. Evaluate the following. So this is my air function of f. Now these are a bunch of line segments. Now for question number one, this is saying find the area on the domain 0 to 1. And this is a triangle. So it's above, so it's going to give me one half. The base is one. The height is two. So that's just going to give me one right there. For question number two, again, this is the area on the domain one to four. Well, one to four, it's a trap. It's a trapezoid. So we get one half, the sum of the bases, which is one, two, three, plus the top base, which is 1, and the height, that's going to be our height here, which is going to be 1 as well. And that's going to give us 2. Very easy to do. What about the area from 3 to 5? Hmm, there are two ways I can do this. From 3 to 5, method 1, it just depends on how much you know. The area from 3 to 4 is a triangle, 1 half, the base is 1, the height is 1, Minus, now why minus is because we are below the x-axis. This is an area of a triangle, one half, its base is one, its height is one, and we get a net area of zero. Method two, we can use that symmetry that we talked about earlier. Take a look. They're the exact same shape. One is above, one is below, so this is just going to be zero. Very easy to do. The next one, what about the area from 5 to 0? Now they want the whole area. So to do this, though, they did it bad different. They went from 5 to 0. So I am going to switch that around by making this a negative. Makes it a little bit easier for me. Equals to negative. And now I'm just going to look up at up all those areas. The first area is from 0 to 1, which we already have. It's just 1 half, 1 by 2, plus the area from 1 to 4. So remember, I'm going to break it down where it crosses. Basically, you look for those critical numbers. The next one, my trapezoid, that's that 1 half, 3 plus 1 times 1 plus, and the area from 3 to 4, which is 1 half, 1 by 1, minus the area from 4 to 5, which is negative 1 half, 1 by 1. Now those two already cancel out, which we already know. So remember, these are just my different regions. This is the part from 0 to 1. This is the part from 1 to 4. And this is the part from 3 to 4. And this is the part from 4 to 5. Those cancel out, make it 0. And what we're left with is a negative. This is just 1 plus 2, or negative 3. Remember, the negative came from when we switched directions. So basically, the, the 5 to 0 is kind of like if you flip this image, what's the, what's the area going to be? And the negative means that more of that region would be below the x-axis, which we can kind of see if we look at that. 
All right, the last example, let's take a look here. It says, if f of x represents g prime of x, find the intervals where g of x is increasing and g of x is concave down. So let's see here real quickly here. All right, so they're saying from our graph before, this is now the graph of g prime, so this is a derivative. Find the intervals where g of x is increasing. So again, we're going to need our critical numbers. Always show this down. Where does g prime equal zero? Now remember, g prime is f of x. So we're really looking for where our function is equal to zero here. And of course, that's just one and four. Do your sign charts, one and four. We are talking about g, so don't put f. We're talking about g of x, not, not f, so use g prime. Between zero, and I guess we end at five, between 0 and 1, we're above positive, positive, negative. So where are we increasing? Increasing on 0 to 1. We stop here at 1 or 1 to 4, and that is because g prime of x is greater than 0. Now, what we just did here, comparing using g prime, uh, f to explain g prime is what we call the second fundamental theorem of calculus. We're going to talk about that later on. But as you can see, it's really easy to do. Where is the function concave down? So now we want to find out our possible points of inflection, where the second derivative is 0, or d and e. And I can get those by looking at the graph. Well, remember, if this is the graph of f, we're really looking at the slope. So we need the slopes of f. So, um, where is it zero? Up, oh, undefined at one, two, and three. Where are the slopes undefined? And if I do my sign chart, again we're talking g double prime and g of x from zero to five, one, two, and three. Between zero and one, the slope is negative, because it's going down, so it's concave down. Between one and two, slope is positive, concave up. Z between two and three, the slope is zero, no concavity. You can draw a flat line there if you want to. Three to five, it's negative, concave down. So we are concave down on zero to one, or three to five, because the second derivative is less than zero. By the way, just for fun, where are my poise at? Poise at x equals one. Two is not a point of inflection because we don't change signs. We go from positive to zero, that's not a point of inflection. Same thing for three is not a point of inflection because the slope goes from zero to one to a negative. Zero has no sign attached to it. So the only point of inflection is x equals one and that is because, again, we're talking g, g double prime of x, all you have to do is say changes signs. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all later. Have fun. Bye-bye.